The problem is there is no equation for the English language. There's no equation for the for Mandarin or for any language. And so the ability of the language model, it's really limited to mixing and matching what it found on the on the internet. And so, yes, it can make a new essay, but that essay essentially is um, regurgitating bits and pieces of what came before. That's really what's happening. It's a probabilistic engine that is spitting out stuff that it hopes and we hope makes some coherent sense. And with enough training and you know human feedback, humans in the loop feedback, then we can actually make that happen more often than not. There's still a lot of hallucinations, of course. So we're really limited in terms of we can't really go beyond what is really in that in that corpus. So, so that's language models. And the question is, what else could we do with this kind of architecture, the, the architectures of neural networks, and in general, with artificial intelligence? Well, let's think about the world beyond words. And so, OK, language models, a lot of words, great, easy training set, low-hanging fruit. That's really why it started with that. But it turns out the majority of our world, Peter, is not words, but numbers. Mm -hmm. The majority of our world, if you think about a medicine, a drug, it's described by numbers, by certain configurations of carbons and hydrogen, and maybe we throw in a nitrogen or throw in some sulfur and things like that, and we make different medicines. If we think about biology, that's numbers. If we think about physics, we think about battery chemistry to store energy, those are numbers, right? And there's no amount of training in words that's going to help you design that next battery because you need to know about the laws of chemistry and physics. And we need to have the exact nature of those laws, not a guess, not a, a, some paragraph in a textbook, but the actual mathematics of and this so ball game. There are, and I think this was the insight, right, that brought about the creation of Sandbox AQ. There are laws of physics. Uh, they go back 100 years. There are some fundamental laws of quantum physics. And we all know Newtonian physics, F equal MA, you know, uh, you know, you, you, the what we, learned to yeah. what we learned to describe the you know velocity of a cannonball shooting out of a, of a cannon, but there are a series of laws of physics um, known as sort of the the quantum equations, and I, I just you know wrote them down because I want to I want to discuss them a little bit. Um, you know Schrodinger's equation, Heisenberg's uncertainty equation, Planck's equation, Born's probabilistic interpretation equations. Yeah, was the ability of computation to model these equations accurately what brought about the birth of sandbox aq it was the realization that we could have the compute we could bring the future forward peter that's really what you and i have been doing our whole lives what we love bringing doing, the future yes. forward and this was a realization that we could bring the future forward to compute these laws at scale with impact with deep impact at a scale that would impact billions of people.